Zoltan Pozar, the repo market oracle himself, just predicted the unthinkable. I'm going to explain this to you in one simple, fast step. Step number one, let's go over what his prediction was. He's saying the United States economy is either going to experience runaway inflation or an economic depression. This is the choice the Federal Reserve is going to have to make. The premise for his argument is the West, for a long time, most specifically the United States, has created the demand the world needs, this aggregate demand for consumer goods and products, while the East has provided the supply. But this relationship between the East and the West is breaking down. And this is a structural problem that will last decades, possibly, into the future. To understand his prediction and his ideas even better, editor, let's cut to the internet. This is from a Bloomberg article titled, Pozar says L-shaped recession is needed to conquer inflation. And he actually goes on to use the word depression. I'm surprised they didn't use that in the title. But it starts by saying the United States economy may need to undergo a deeper and longer recession than investors currently anticipate before inflation can be brought under control. According to Zoltan Pozar of Credit Suisse Group, War is inflationary, Pozar wrote. Think of the economic war as a fight between the consumer-driven West, where the level of demand has been maximized, and the production-driven East, where the level of supply has been maximized to serve the needs, or the aggregate demand, of the West. That pattern held until East-West relations soured, which is what we've seen over the past few months, and I would argue that it started to deteriorate, even going back to the GFC. More on that in a moment. The result is inflation is now a structural problem rather than a cyclical one. Supply disruptions have arisen from the changes in Russia and China, along with tighter labor markets due to immigration restrictions and reduction of mobility caused by the response, the government's response to the Cerveza sickness. I said Cerveza Cygnus. Pozar didn't say that. <laughs> there's no, <laughs> there's now a risk the Federal Reserve under Chair Powell has to raise rates to 5 or 6% and keep them there to create a substantial and sustained reduction of aggregate demand to match the tighter supply profile. This is a fascinating concept that we're going to outline in just a moment on the whiteboard. He concludes by saying interest rates may be kept high for a while and very high, I might add, to ensure rate cuts won't cause or trigger a renewed bout of inflation. The risks are such that Powell will try his very best to curb inflation, even at the cost of an economic depression. Now let's move over to this chart and put all the pieces of the puzzle together. We start 1870 and go all the way to today's date. And we try to think about what may happen into the future going all the way out to 2038. So this is a chart of globalization and deglobalization. It actually runs in cycles. I found this fascinating when I was doing the research. On the left, we go from 0% up to 60%. These percentages are basically a proxy for globalization. So going back to 1870, all the way to the beginning, roughly of World War I, we saw globalization increase. Countries were sending more goods and services back and forth due to the Industrial Revolution. Then we get World War I, and it just plummets, as you would imagine. And it goes down throughout the Great Depression until the end of World War II. So this time frame, this cycle, if you will, was about 30 years, roughly, maybe 31, 32 years. And what we saw is kind of a feedback loop, a doom loop, a doom vortex, <laughs> if you will, where protectionism in tariffs led 
to less economic growth, which led to even more protectionism and tariffs. And it was this downward spiral until we get to a point where globally we have social unrest. If you get enough social unrest, what does that lead to? Nine times out of 10, it leads to war, which is exactly what we saw at the end of the last fourth turning or the end of this deglobalization cycle. But then we go into a phase of globalization once again, from the end of World War II all the way to the GFC. Once we get to the GFC, we have less economic activity. This creates an environment of a little more protectionism, but the protectionism goes into overdrive when Trump gets elected in 2000, what was it, 16 or so. But what Zoltan is saying is now what's happening because of the Cerveza sickness, Russia, Ukraine, China, Saudi Arabia, India, the BRIC countries, etc. We're seeing this deterioration, this breakdown, this structural problem where the relationship between the consumer-driven West, the demand, global demand, let's say, and the global supply with the East for all the goods that we consume is breaking down significantly. This would lead to a collapse in the goods available in a consumer-driven economy such as the United States. So let's kind of think this through on a little different level. I drew these charts just so you could get your head around what Zoltan is saying. Because like I said in the reading, it's a very interesting concept. So we've got three colors of arrows. Blue is demand, red, supply, green, is price. So let's just say that we have everything in an equilibrium where demand matches up with supply, or maybe better said, supply matches up with demand. Then you see prices stay the same. But if we go into an environment, which we've seen since 2020, where the supply goes down, demand stays the same, or you could even argue demand goes up because of stimmy checks and PPP, then what's going to happen to prices? they're going to go up higher and higher and higher. The inflation is not going to be transitory. <laughs> but what needs to occur in order to bring prices back down to a level that the Fed is targeting? Let's say to where the CPI is 2% measured by the government. I always throw in that caveat. Well, what you have to do is you have to decrease aggregate demand way lower than the decrease in the amount of supply that you've seen over the last couple of years, or the decrease in the amount of supply that we will see into the future as the relation between China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, and the West deteriorates even further. So the next question becomes, okay, George, I get it, but how would we bring demand down that significantly? We're talking about a collapse in demand in the West and the United States. Well, Zoltan proposes that Jerome Powell will have to take rates, Fed funds overnight, up to 5 or 6% and keep rates there for not just quarters, but potentially years. Think about what that would do to the United States economy if the Fed funds rate was at 6%. Where would mortgages be? Mortgages would be 10, 12, maybe 15% in the United States. What do you think that would do to the housing market? What do you think that would do to the stock market? What do you think that would do to GDP? It would contract significantly, very similar to the contraction we saw during the first Great Depression. But remember what history teaches us. It's not just about an economic problem. It's far more significant. And this is one thing that Zoltan, that's obviously Zoltan right here, <laughs> points out in his article. Let's just go back to the Great Depression. We didn't just have a depression in the United States. There was an economic depression in Germany as well. And they were in this doom loop of protectionism tariffs leading to lower economic growth, a lower standard of living. And it just compounds until a point where you get social unrest, and this produces an environment where you can have a megalomaniac 
come in, take control of the country, and take the entire globe into a world war. And one last thing I'd like to point out is it doesn't really matter whether we have deflation, disinflation, or inflation. At the end of the day, if the standard of living is decreasing, if people's purchasing power is going down, that's what matters. The average Joe and Jane on the street doesn't care if they can't put food on the table because of some economic term or definition like inflation or deflation. The only thing they care about is their ability to put food on the table, a roof over their head, or gas in their car. So if Zoltan is right, and we have this structural problem between the West and the East, and looking at these cycles, this problem can last not just days, months, years, but potentially decades. That puts the United States, and unfortunately the average Joe and Jane, into a position where neither option is good, because the outcome is the exact same. Whether we have runaway inflation or an economic depression, the standard of living in society at large goes down. For more content that will help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out-of-control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.